Hi, this is Sean. In this video, I'm going to go over a method for getting relatively free ambient occlusion. So let's get started. In the past, you would pretty much have to go in and use mental ray and then go into indirect lighting and use ambient occlusion. You could also go and apply a surface shader and plug a MIB ambient occlusion uh, node in that way. But you know, rendering out ambient occlusion takes a long time through Mental Ray. So another method in digging through the help docs of Maya 2015, there's a mention of ambient occlusion pass, which is accelerated by the GPU. Uh, and you, if you have the right graphics card and the right drivers, that could work. So you can try that out if you want. Uh, and but this method is maybe even broader. Uh, so within the uh, viewport 2.0 they have the SSAO component the new it's relatively new uh, in the last few years screen space ambient occlusion and so the default is like a 1 16 16 and 16 samples maybe and it looks pretty good you can increase the samples to get slightly better um, slightly more accuracy and then to get the look that you're going for you can you know overdrive or underdrive if you want to have like more ambient occlusion and if you want a tighter AO and then also how much it's filtered and spread out so and then um, so in, in terms of just you'd still do a multi-pass render where you would render something out with regular shadows maybe using a ray trace shadow pass which is what's done here. And then similar to the previous method, you uh, a previous method, you could go into um, Maya and, ex and assign a surface shader and make that surface shader completely white. And so then instead you could go, instead of rendering anything out through the Maya uh, CPU render, you could just go in and right click and do a play blast render um, of either your a play blast um, of your animation in this case I'm just gonna render out an image since uh, I'm not moving my camera or anything but you know you <clears throat> need to adjust the scale and the quality level um, so if you if you're gonna render out something like a uh, it depends on what image you're going I guess if you're doing like a good JPEG so and um, and then I'm gonna do from render settings and I'm going to save to file. So we'll call this town AO. And so pretty much that's uh, the workflow. And hit a uh, play blast. And it just, it's rendering all my frames apparently right now, which I didn't really want. So I'm going to hit escape. And, um, and so now you can just composite them just the the standard way that you would have composited them before and so here's the still frame i can save that out and you've pretty much got your <clears throat> free ambient occlusion so hopefully that's useful to a lot of people uh, i guess one other final thought is if you render this out and maybe you've got artifacts or you've got slight um you can see you've got slight aliasing going on here and so you know you can compensate a little bit for that by blurring blurring your AO pass a little bit or tightening it up using post-processing but I, I think that'll save a lot of my students a lot of rendering time um, if you do it if you you know sort of apply this correctly and you also do a little post-processing blurring and um, getting it looking right or at least it can it can suffice for a first pass to get like an 80 to 90 percent look and then when you're 100 percent sure that everything's looking great you could do you could go in and really increase your samples and do a mental ray ao pass if you wanted all right so thanks so much for watching we'll see you in the next video